Time for some more comic book reviews. Try, still trying to get through our big pile of stuff in the past month. Now, I don't know what happened to me. <laughs> I, I lost the other book to this one. If you saw me do the unpacking a couple weeks back, probably. I got Cardboard Samurai from, I believe, a Canadian creator. His name is Keith Johnson. Yeah, I don't need to read that. You're going to have to get your own book to read that for yourself. But he did an awesome job. The other one's also a book he pressed and put some fun little tabs and uh, a special page, like indentation additions and stuff like that. I can't. It's not letting me come up with the right words right now. <clears throat> but black and white. Really fun story. Really fun character. I love this cardboard samurai guy. He's... There's a whole thing with paper airplane folding and stuff that goes with this story, but he just goes along in life and things happen that he has to deal with and just it everything gets turned into a fun story. While he does it, there's a variety of story lines throughout this book. And the other one. And some unique characters that he comes across. But yeah, it's like we got a character that's basically all cardboarded it up as his own superhero costume. That he, it's basically made out of cardboard. <laughs> It just comes, I, yeah. The smaller book is, I know I'm gonna get it wrong, but I'm gonna honestly say it's called Cardboard Samurai versus Gumwad. And he's basically walking along and all of a sudden steps in on some gum on the ground, and certain demonic things happen. <laughs> just a, it's a hilarious story. You gotta get look into my unpacking video of what we got from them and the uniqueness of the characters and vehicles and stuff that he comes up with in here is just it's it's a blast uh you can only get it through contacting him and having him ship it to you direct as far as I know, or if maybe you're, you're in Canada or wherever he's at a con, maybe you might be able to buy him off him. But yeah, I, I suggest if you like anything unique, fun, interesting, new concept on superheroism and stuff, and the normal guy is trying to get through life and deal with the Things that come across his path. This is this is a blast. I was so happy that Anthony introduced me to that from Crimson Call Comic Club, and I was able to pick that up and check that out. All right, next up, better set this one aside too till later. We got. I don't even think I need my glasses because I don't think there's any synopsis in this yet. Book at all. Uh, we got Gunslinger Spawn 23 and 24. Story's going longer than I wanted it to, but yet it's still a blast to check out. In this one, we're still battling. Gunslingers still having to deal with the, the clown, Violator, the evil clown and his minions, and the clown basically sending his daughter back to hell, and it's just 
all the issues that have are coming along with it while we have Spawn and the rest of the gang trying to figure out what they're going to do with Tagliastro and all those characters. But this gets us in a little bit deeper story, more stuff getting us into our human character with who has a very interesting background story with his father and what his father is associated with. Um, our, our, uh, <laughs> Clown Spawn's daughter. She's able to control certain creatures and these creatures can turn into all kinds of things. And she, uh, I don't really want to ruin it, but they go through a bunch of big battles in these last few issues and a bunch of stuff happens, but she does send one of her little minions along with Gunslinger Spawn. So he's got the capabilities of using that character now. He's going at the moment. And with everything that's happening along the way, I can't, I don't really want to ruin it, but yeah, we're still battling for the realms of hell, the doorways of hells, the, the spot on the throne Who's going to become King Spawn, all that shit. But this story's been a lot of fun. I have not been following along with King Spawn and Scorched. But the Spawn storyline and the Gunslinger I have. I think I did order uh, one of the last couple issues of Scorched. Just because I think there is something with violator the clown that was going on on the cover so i was curious where that storyline was laying at the moment but they're all crossing over some way shape or form because bond's using gunslinger he's using the scorched character i can't she think of her name at the moment uh and we got Haunt and all those characters that are part of the group. and So all the different sidelines are all crossing over in one way, shape, or form. I am curious with the King Spawn storyline where the kid, what what's happening with the kid from that, the beginning issues that I read that came up to Spawn and said some important things and was a very curious character. We got Harley Quinn, black, white, and redder. All these black, white, and red, black, white, and gold, black, white, and blue, all that. They have been wonderful. I maybe found a couple stories that were eh, but otherwise, I've enjoyed them all. Uh, this one, we got Deeply Strange Adventures. Where Harley Quinn goes through some weird timeline. And she kind of like deals with her own similar characters. We got Gail Simone, David Baldian, Chris Condon, Jacob Phillips, John Junie Ba. And Aditya Bedekar are all the creators in this run. But yeah, it's like different multiverse type crossovers of the har different Harleys, different Ivies, and stuff. And fun, trippy story. We got Stack Deck. Which this one takes us back to Arkham Asylum, takes us more to the psychi psychiatric style. Harley Quinn and 
just so happens to get some Joker history and crosses over with the Joker in that one. And then we got the rebound. This one takes us again to a Kind of the weirder, younger Harley Quinn. And we get the cartoony stylings in this one. Uh, but yeah, we go back to her younger version, get some history again with the Joker and stuff. And eventually crosses over with kind of a oh, I want to say can't think of damn name of it <laughs> my brain's just all blank a uh, little shop of horrors feel to this uh, we have a certain plant character in this storyline, but <clears throat> all wonderful stories done by a variety of interesting creators. I am just loving where this has been going. Uh, got Troy Dungara's latest, other than the Halloween covers and stuff he did. We got Kid Slapshot versus Lunatic. Well, Lunatic. Which is... This character has just been... Going through all kinds of hell. Ever since he made set up this Kid Slapshot character, he's just been... Trying to... <laughs> uh... Take back with what he started, I guess you could say. Kind of just not happy with his creation and <laughs> is doing what he can to put his creation in his place and get him to follow his orders without going off script and doing things that just drive Lou insane. As always, we got an awesome centerfold and on the set outsides of the centerfold we got a variety of uh, artwork and fan comments and stuff and this one happens to have another uh, picture done by me and picture done by Anthony from the Crimson Cult Comic Club but yeah, these are a blast. I love these stories where they're where they've been going, and I've been having lots of fun with them. I like that we're getting the monsters again. And if you read my got my reviews from my original Slapshot comics back in the day. <laughs> You know what I was talking about. But, uh, yeah. Troy Dungare is doing an awesome job with the Kid Slapshot run. Uh, so many fun one shots. He's been coming up with a lot of like, one shots for that storyline. Kind of curious if he's got an ongoing one run coming up. Like a five issue or something like that. I'm curious, but I love the one shots because grab any one of them, read them, enjoy them. And pretty much, yeah, you got the ongoing storyline, but they're all great little standalone comics. We got Local Man. This is issue one, I believe. By Tony Flex and Tim Seeley and Philippe Sobrero. 
Uh, no, this might be issue two. I hate that they don't <laughs> lay it out. Simply for you to, because this one is this cover is a parody cover. I have the gold, silver, blue, uh, the different comics. Uh, <clears throat> I can't. Can't think of the damn. <laughs> uh, what what storyline does them? But yeah, there's a gold foily cover. There's a blue foily cover. A red one. A silver one. Was there a black one? There's a variety of different colored foily style covers for a run that I have. <laughs> My MS brain is just not going to give it up. Might pop up in my head later on. But this has the flip cover style. See, this side might say. Oh, just local man gold is all they're going to do. I don't think the other covers were play parody off this. They might be. We might be getting that from him. Who knows? <laughs> Find out when I get my next next issue, I guess. But previously, once the star recruit of Media Sensation Super Team Third Gen, Jack Zaber, had it all. But controversy sent Crossjack crawling back to his mom and dad's basement in the Midwest. Jack's descent into self-pity was cut short when the murder of his arch enemy, the Hodag, threw him back into action. But now, without the Crossjack costume, and legally barred from using his trademark shield and powers, Jack finds Crusader or finds himself in a fight to the death against his mentor, Camel Crusader, and ultimately discovers a conspiracy in his own backyard to utilize new hero recruits as fodder for superhuman power harvesting, a conspiracy Jack is unaware is being perpetrated by his ex-girlfriend, Inga Bucho, Bucholtz, Bucholtz, like it's fun. I love everything Tim Seeley because you get the Wisconsin little uh, points of interest, Wisconsin uh, lore and towns and names and things that you'll know if you're from Wisconsin, uh, such as the Hodeg is if you go to Rhinelander, Wisconsin, that's where the Hodeg originates from it's a giant lizard like demon looking character uh creature but just things like that just fun when they pop out when you're reading stories done by someone from the place that you were born and you just get those little references it's just it makes me buy as much of his stuff as I can get my hands on. Whereas if he didn't do that, I probably wouldn't buy three quarters of the stuff that he's put out. Cause I just want to click to my head and I want to caught on to it. And now I, I want to go back and get all the stuff I'm missing. See what he's talked about in his storylines and stuff where he's gone with parodying up Wisconsin and the, regions of the areas and stuff but if you want to hear a great description of this storyline and 
this whole local man storyline that he's got going on. It's going already. I think they got seven issues printed already out. Or come, I think I just ordered the seventh or eighth issue. But uh, on John Centris's Word Balloon podcast, he just had Tim Seeley on, and he uh, gave a great little uh, description of this, the character, and all that stuff, and actually learned some things by listening to him on that podcast. So I understand the character a little more than I did just reading the comics. Artwork, wonderful as always. The flip stories. I'm pretty sure, from what I remember, it doesn't matter which way you read this. Uh, Worked out great. You'll understand what's going on. But I just love how we have all these different characters from these worlds being crossed over through this local man comic. And I'm learning about a lot of superhero characters that I didn't even know about. So that's another bonus because of the variety of characters I do like from those comics, image comics, just seeing them get put all together. And the comic is always enjoyable. So, which we're doing a great job with the whole uh, Geiger world, too. I love what they've been doing with that. And there's a few that I ha- didn't pick up in the past that now I want to pick up. But now that they're crossing over with the other ones. Lots of great independent comics starting to do some big crossovers right now the past year. All right, we got Kevin Smith's final issues, seven and eight of Masquerade. Our character with the skin issues (laughs) that's been tortured and put through all kinds of hell as a child and she's going after the characters that did all this stuff to her getting them caged up getting them prepared for a big show where she's gonna go live on tv and basically destroy the entities that destroyed her life and it's just This was a lot of fun. I think they should have stuck to the six issue plan. I think that's what happened. Is it went from six to eight. And there were a couple issues in between that were just basic fodder. Just throwing it. You could tell they were were the issues that were added on to push this an extra couple comics. Getting those extra couple dollars out of the franchise, but I think it would have been a stronger comic if they would have just kept it with their original planned run and then went to a volume two and sat there and did another strong six issues or whatever, but that's just me. Overall, loved it. Didn't think I was going to stick with it. Thought at first, eh, not sure about this. But I think if Andy McElfresh was not part of it, I probably went to held on to it as long as I did. But I'm glad I did. I like where it went. I like the outcome. But fun story. If you like Kevin Smith stuff, you'll probably enjoy that. And we got Money Shot. Issue three and issue four. I 
Oh, Money Shot comes again, by the way. This is the second volume, I believe, of this run also. The triple explorers are trapped on the body of a dead space god with demented tech billionaire Hannah Dorsch. Can they escape to complete their mission, or will they be forced to accept an indecent proposal? Meanwhile, Sherry tests her power. <laughs> it's like the crossovers on this. Oh, I can't really show much <laughs> from this one. <laughs> Almost every page has some type of sexual reference or character exposure of some sorts. Yeah, I'm not even going to bother <laughs> with this one. But yeah, they're basically dealing with being stuck where they don't need to be or don't want to be, and they got to deal with the alien entity along the way. And if you know the Sherry, Sherry character from the adult Archie-style <laughs> comics in the past, you'll understand who Sherry is. I like to show her, but yeah, every page is <laughs> full of things I can't, I shouldn't show. And I suppose I could, and I do put down that this is not not for the youngins. This has got adult content in it. And then uh, fourth issue, the triple explorers must make their way through a strange new world where their past will come back to haunt them. What is the evil billionaire's plan, and what does it have to do with the... Counselor Cinch, Dr. Ganon, and adult comic starlet Sherry. So you get to see what happens to him once while trapped inside the giant entity, or if they get out of the giant entity. And yeah, I can't show none of this one either. <laughs> It's fun. It's a, I mean, this is so, this is the perfect way. I mean, this is also by Tim Seeley, drawn by Giselle Legace, or Legache, Gache, Carlos Badilla Z, and Crank all had their hands involved in this. Uh, again, if you go and listen, it was like a, a week ago, uh, one of the latest, I can't say one of the latest because he puts out so many episodes, but John Centris, again, with the Word Balloon podcast, uh, he just had Tim Seeley on, and they also talked about this, talked about a good variety of Tim Seeley stuff, but uh, yeah, he can give a good description of it uh, to you through that also. But basically, he takes sexual stuff and takes it in a direction that our minds go, but yet plays with it in a fun and unique way. I, I he, he can explain everything way better than I can. It's his stuff, but the way I see it, it's just... It's what you want. When, like we were reading Once Upon a Time and I jumped off because it just got to the point of, eh, that's more frivolous fornication. This is more fun and has a point to it. And it's just, yeah, it's a lot of fun. But I'm going to stop it here. We'll get back to more of the stack in a day or two, hopefully. But, Keep following under the color of MS. Check out Crimson Color Comic Club. Rate, review, tell a friend. Help us get some likes and some hits and some whatever to try and get us maybe someone to advertise with us or help us out. <laughs> so we put out a lot of free content out there. Hopefully you enjoy some of it. And if you enjoy it at all, at least give us a thumbs up or something. Get a friend to subscribe, but yeah, that's it for now. We'll talk to you again soon. Bye.